What up, loved ones? What it do? It's Pada Young right here. You know where I'm from. Thanks for tuning in. And if you're new to this channel right here, just hit the subscribe button real quick. Give it a like if you think it's cool, if you think it's real. Hell yeah, we got the homie uh, Il from Oceanside watching, man. And uh, he's, he's here to uh, introduce himself. And uh, he has a positive message. So, guys, trip out. You know what I mean? So, yeah, bro, introduce yourself, homie. <laughs> Uh, first off, thank you, Pada Young. You know, <clears throat> I gotta thank the body for spreading that that you know positive energy uh, for the youth. You know, pushing that line, and that's something that we really need. So, yeah, uh, you know, my name is uh, Il from Oceanside. Uh, actually, you know, I grew up uh, in LA. So, you know, at the age of ten, I was kind of being a bad kid. I was stealing and doing crazy stuff. You know, but uh, you know, I just wanted to do what I wanted to do, and. Um, you know, join the gang at, you know, join the hood at 12 years old. Uh, basically, you know, was was thugging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel you, bro. Uh, what do you call this? May I ask, were you already <laughs> born here or did you come from Korea also? No, I was born here. Um, you know, I'm Chinese of Chinese descent. Um, Sorry, but Chinese, my bad. Trip out, trip out though. My, my parents are actually born in Korea. So, oh. Pada, you're kind of right, dog. <laughs> they were born in uh, they were born in Korea, and um, but they're Chinese. You know, they ran away from the war, um, so they're like second generation born in Korea. Yeah. Oh, for sure. So, mm -hmm. man, growing up in uh, which part of LA did you grow up? So I grew up on the east side, uh, more towards the San Gabriel Valley, Monterey Park, Alhambra, South San Gabriel, all throughout the SUV. I, uh, that's where I grew up. And then. Uh, I mean, I feel you on the culture part, the LA culture part. Did you experience, uh, did you get bullied or any kind of, uh, you know, uh, racism or anything like that growing up? Yeah, so actually, you know, I grew up, but like I said, on the east side of LA, my, my, my family actually, um, you know, we were poor. We weren't the typical Chinese, you know, rich and, you know, all that, that stereotypical stuff. Actually, uh, I grew up in some project housing, and also uh, we were on Section 8 back when food stamps was monopoly money. I don't know if you remember that, but <laughs> it was <real. laughs> it, it was legit. But uh, yeah, I grew up like that, and, and yeah, I faced a lot of uh, racism and discrimination from, like, Hispanics, because we kind of shared yeah. the same, you know, neighborhoods with them. Um, yeah, yeah I, I think that's kind of what molded me. I was fighting at the age of 9, 10 years old, just catching phase with people, and just from walking home, they try to take your backpack. You know, they make fun of your 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 shoes because I, I had shoes from Payless. You know, so we were poor, dog. I had the WCW shoes. <laughs> oh, but, yeah. damn! And th uh -huh. thanks for uh, clarifying that because uh, most of these people are uh, what do you call this? They got this stereotype that like Asians always got the their doctors and not everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah, they got, they got the misconception. So, anywho, bro. Growing up, I feel you, man. I mean, we weren't like rich either. Uh, you was getting in a fight in the schools. How did you end up hanging out with uh, watching? Did you find them? They found you? So actually, you know, as I was a kid, I was hanging out with a lot of older people. You know, I always had that me my mentality that although I was young, I kicked it with a lot of people much older than me. So through that, I was able to kind of discover people and, and, and family members and stuff like that. You know, they, they knew each other. So, um, yeah, at the age of 12, you know, I wanted to do what I wanted to do. So I was like, man, forget it, dude. I'm, I'm just going to do this. You know, I got no money, got a lot of hate inside of my heart, got a lot of, you know, at that time, racism and discrimination inside of my heart. I hated, you know, I, I didn't really beef it with other Asians. For me, it was more of a race thing already from Ooh. off the bat, you know, okay. so through that and also you know they kind of had that platform because you know a little bit of our history we're chinese and most of us i mean they're i'm not saying it's a ex uh, exclusively chinese gang but what it means in chinese that name uh it means chinese youth literally so you know we got koreans we got you know uh we got some mexicans we got you know vietnamese but for the most part yeah i i, I joined them because i was chinese and we kind of related like that Damn, uh, what do you call this? Watching uh, after hanging out with, with, with some of them, you started uh, basically they gave you your they gave you a gun. Cause that, oh. that's how it usually works. They just give enough guns for free or whatever, right? Here, put it some <laughs> and then right. I feel you on the part when you said yeah, you got a lot of hate at that time. 
uh, you was a little kid, you was 12 years old, you really didn't know really much about, but you, we acted like we know everything, but at that age, we, we, we didn't really know. So you found yourself just not giving up, giving a fuck basically, man, right? Right. So can, can you tell us, did you end up like going to juvenile halls and CYA and stuff? Yes, sir. So <clears throat> actually I, um, you know, caught a case as a kid, as a juvenile and, um, you know, I, I was actively banging at that time, you know, and so, you know, when I went, I got caught up basically for, you know, I don't want to talk too much about the case, but it was basically yeah. just a switch to witness and um, basically hit, you know, Fred C. Nellis, you know, why? And uh, over there, my experience, it shaped me, man. I would say that it turned me into a monster straight up because um, at that time, you know, there wasn't much Asians. Like even when I hit that line, like there wasn't much oh. Asian people. Um, and there was people from my neighborhood too, but they're like the so-called homies. You know what I mean? It's like, you know about them, but they not really like you there's, we got like fobs, you know, we got like other people that claim it. And, and, you know, I didn't know nothing about them, honestly. And we, I just knew, okay, they was dubs, you know, but when I hit that, you know, that cottage, I was basically like, just actively like, I want to thug, I want to gangbang. And um, that the rest was history, basically. <laughs> Damn, bro, I, I feel you on that. That was in YA too. What uh, year were you on, uh, Nellis? Uh, 2002. Ooh. Yeah. That's what so right when it yeah. closed down, it, it, you know, I, I stayed there until it basically closed. Uh, it closed, I think, in 04. Yeah. By the way, was Nellis, is, is it a dorm or was it like SRCC or a little? No, it was more like a dorm. It was cots. You know what I mean? It was cottages. Oh, cottage. So, okay, okay. Yeah. So it goes by cottages, but I would say more like a dorm. You know, there's Truman, Hayes, uh, you know, Cleveland, all of those different cottages. Yeah. Did they have uh, Norteño over there or just the... Uh, the time that I went, I heard about some, but I was already, it was already too, like, late, I think, you know, there was some, like, from what I heard, maybe a couple years earlier, um, you know, before yeah. I hit, but there really wasn't much Norteño. For me, it was more like Blacks, like, there was, like, the Respect the Blacks, there was the Firme Rasa, you know, there was people like that, and then the Asian Pride card, too, but for us, it was so little, there wasn't that many Asians there, honestly, yeah. Oh, damn, but, but the few Asians that was active... Mm -hmm. they, were, they were they were riding it out huh yeah hey honestly yes. I'm, I, that's where i learned you know because they laced me up there you know yeah. they was like you only got like two seconds if somebody disrespects you you take off it doesn't matter what it yeah. is even if it's an inkling even if you feel disrespected yeah. that's mandatory you know what i mean so i i was so thankful about that because you know i i'm, I'm sorry to say you know just to keep it real but other people i've seen they kind of like roll it up they bitch out they you know it was i've seen a lot of that but yeah. to be real the stint the, the stay that i was there no yeah. asians they didn't back down <laughs> straight damn, up damn bro and th that's the thing uh the two second part that's hella real because if you don't take off and you get disrespected you don't take off in, within two seconds don't even bother taking off and the more it doesn't count the more you're right. right. <laughs> why it was crazy it's like the it's like the show spartacus man except <laughs> right except we were outnumbered bro so you really got to be hard to still be with the business being outnumbered right right yeah, yeah and uh man if, if if i could just you know if there's uh actually i'll get into it some some other time let's push forward bro so after uh cya you got out i know you got the cya mentality because there's gladiator school right there right. what how did you feel in the streets bro like uh I was still active. I wanted to, you know what I'm saying? I, I felt that I didn't realize, but I had that emptiness inside of my heart. Like I, I was young at the time, you know, 12, yeah. 13 years old. Like I didn't know, you know, and when I get out, you know, I'm like 14, 15 years old pushing that. And at that time, that's like when you really, you know, and my OGs, they would say stuff like this, man, don't be thinking you're hard just because you went there. You know, they, they kind of like egg you on, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, you ain't nothing, bro. I did this. I went to the pen, whoop de whoop. So all this stuff, you know, and you have that mentality, especially like, man, I got this. Like anybody that says something to me, even me, I couldn't take people just looking at me. You know what I mean? When they looked at me, it was a problem immediately off the bat. So yeah, it was, it was like that, you know? <laughs> Oh man, I, I feel you on that, man. Just look at me weird. That, that's that's good enough for me. We gonna get out. <laughs> right. Yeah, man. Damn, bro. So, okay, 
it was out there and then you got yourself caught up again because at that time your kung fu was still weak like your zen you still got a lot of hate in your heart right, right. <laughs> exactly <laughs> And then, uh, bam, so you got caught up again. What happened? Uh, how was it? Did you, did you go to the county jail? Yeah, so I went to Old County, you know, uh, Man Central. Uh, okay, okay. Gang module, of course. And, um, yeah, at that time, you know, I, I really, uh, it was different, bro. Because think about it. You, you're you coming out from YA, and you're thinking, like, all right, it's going to be like this, you know. But yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. it's a little different. It's a little different. You hit that yeah. thing, and you're like, I mean, there's a little squabbles here and there, and they're still gangbanging. Don't get me wrong. We see people come in, you know, from the tank or whatever and be like, all right, I know this fool. He's an enemy, whatever. But it's nothing like YA. I can't explain it, bro. It's nothing like, there's nothing like YA, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because uh, for, for me, the way I explain it, CYA was like, fuck your race. It don't matter what really race you're from at, at that time, because right. it's all about the streets, street politics. But when exactly. you go to the prison, the Men Central LA County CDC, now it's really the real prison politics. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And then it's all about your. If you weren't racist before, though, you go to CDC. It's gonna. It's, it's kind of like gonna turn you to like. Basically, like racist to every, everyone else. Like oh, we're the most superior. We're the hardest. You know, yeah. like like really, exactly. like you can't see me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Damn, exactly. bro. So uh, you went to Man Central and then you ended up, which prison did you go to? So I went to, I did reception at Lancaster. And then from there, um, you know, I went, they shipped me off to Ironwood State Prison. And I was on the sea yard. And, um, you know, I, a funny story, you know, you get laced up yeah. everywhere you go. But yes, when sir. I went there, yeah. uh, I didn't know that the, that's why I'm telling that YA mentality. Like, I didn't know yeah. that. Um, Asians, some when I was there, they explained to me that when you take a piss, you got to sit down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, so yeah. I thought that that was disrespect. I was like, well, homie, you trying to say I'm a bitch? Like, what the hell? You know? And it was like, no, 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 no. I'm letting you know you got to sit. You know, you can't because then people's head is, you know, the bunk, all that. It was a, it was like that, you know, it carried on. But from there, you know, I, I kind of, I guess I kind of learned to program. You know, when you first get it, get there, you don't know how yeah. to program. You don't know anything, bro. So, yeah, sure. I, I feel you. Yeah. 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 Hey, so, uh, I mean, let's keep it G right here because this is what we do right here in, in, the, in the channel, bro. Uh, when, you're, when you're fresh out of YA and then you go to CDC, you go to the real prison politics. Right. Uh, at first, you still had that, that street mentality. Were you still low-key, like, thinking, like, fuck this abz or you know fuck this motherfuckers things watching with woo 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 is this it's kind of like how that goes right of course of course because yeah. more so than that you know like we're chinese so we're prideful like what i was taught was you know chinese people they have that mentality that they're better than everybody you know what i mean and it's yes, better sir. than all the other races you know it, it's not just we're even like kind of discriminatory towards our own like if you're a northern chinese you don't really like southern chinese there's a lot of this stuff you know to keep it real but basically yeah i was like that man fuck everybody i don't know why we gotta you know kick it with these people like my homies you know my shot up your homies your homies shot up my homies like we can't ever be cool like that was of course the mentality that i had but after a while, what's amazing is when you meet people and you realize that they come from the same struggle and you realize that these people are actually the people that's going to watch your back and you have to depend your yeah. life on these people, then it, it, it was a whole nother ball game, dog. That, that mentality came as quick as it left. You know what I mean? Like it was just, it was fast, bro. Yeah. Damn. For, for, for me also was uh, uh, similar to, your, to yours. Uh, Going to war, outnumbered, bro, and then this, this war, this this not no joke war. This is like you can really end your life kind of war. And and uh, seeing all these enemies, like, for example, like even the Cambodians or, the you know, the ABZ, I'm like, but we're all outnumbered. We're all going to war together against a bigger race, which is like right. the bigger car. And it's like we have no choice but to basically uh, stay as a family because these people right there, they're going to be there for the rest of their life. That's their house, and exactly. you know, and it, that's that, that's the uh, the how tight the car and how family oriented the car is, coming exactly. from our background. Damn! So you went through the whole thing, bro. Um, <laughs> <laughs> at this point, did you uh, what what made you realize that 
this is boo boo, man. And now that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm on a whole, I'm on a whole different level from my thinking. I'm getting older and being more matured. My brain is getting developed. How? What, when did you realize that uh, uh, good versus evil, and why did you choose to do the righteous path instead of just going down that? dumbass road <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah best best put it that way for real like it is a dumbass yeah. road but actually i um you know i had made a determination inside of my heart like bro i'm not gonna come back to this place you know it doesn't matter how gangster you are everybody goes through that you know nobody wants to go to prison you know what i'm saying like people don't want to they might want to go and take a vacation but they don't want to stay there they don't want to catch murder and do life you know in prison and stuff like that so i was you know a person who like I, I, I wanted to do what I wanted to do, right? So, uh, but it got kind of old to me. Uh, when I went to prison, I was kind of like, you know what, this is kind of crazy, all the politics, like, I'm gonna have to stay solid because I, I was representing something, you know, bigger than myself. But at the same time, when I got out, you know, <clears throat> My mom actually, she was still poor. She was still in the projects. She was still no money, you know, she was still like all that. So I was kind of thinking like, man, I'm a man, you know, I should be helping her out. But hey. at the same time, I'm not gonna help her out. You know what I mean? I, I couldn't help her out because I was thugging and I was I was selfish. For the first time I had seen my mom really happy, bro. Like, that's crazy because even my brother too, he did 10 years in the pen too. And a lot of people, you know, know his name in, in, in SUV too. But anyway, uh both we she had two kids that were really bad me and my brother and then she had like an abusive father you know uh, an abusive husband which was my father you know he would drink beat her ass you know all kinds of shit so but when i seen her that day when i had gotten out she was very happy and it wasn't just because of me the getting out but i noticed the change inside of my mom and then through that um you know, she she kind of said like church, you know, she's like, oh, I've been going to church and and for real about it, to keep it real, I was like, man, that shit ain't gonna work, bro. <laughs> like, I don't want to go to like, what is this white Jesus gonna do for me? I'm Buddhist, homie, like I grew up Chinese, you know, like, but uh -huh. actually, yeah, so through that, I kind of ignored it. I put it to the side because I don't want to look weak. I don't want to feel weak. But later on, you know, uh, one of my homies actually got smoked in front of me you know, and they was coming at me, you know, and uh, when that happened, it kind of made me think about my life, like, bro, I know I'm going to die, or I'm going to be, I'm, they're going to bury me under the prison, basically, you know what I mean, like, those are the only two options, so I thought about it, like, man, you know, like, and even then, I didn't want to go out like that, you know, but my mom, you know, one day, she kind of tricked me, she's like, oh, my car is broken, can you take me to church, and then <laughs> when I went to church, Basically, they kind of laced me up about the word and I was kind of shocked, bro. For the first time, you know, I was able to kind of realize like God's like divine intervention, God's plan for people and why we're even in this bullshit, why I was born. You know what I'm saying? Like all these things came to me and um, that emptiness that I felt in my heart that I carried, that sadness that I had, it was basically gone. And I had hope inside of my heart. You know what I mean? Back then, I didn't have no hope. I was like, man, I'm gonna die anyway. Fuck it, let's do it. Let's thug it out until we we finish. You know what I mean? Like, well, I'll die like this. You know, I'll let my name live on. But actually, like for that first time, you know, in 20 some odd years, I felt that hope inside of my heart. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh man, damn. Uh, yeah, that's that, that's uh that's deep right there. The the emptiness you felt kind of uh, relate to uh. This reminds me of King Solomon. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what, he was he's literally the richest person until until today nobody could still beat his richness right. he had everything <laughs> and somehow he still feel like he was empty like i think i think believing in the afterlife helps bro because uh usually uh man i only got this much and i'm gonna die and that's it i might as well just go hard on the paint and just be right. immoral right. and just do everything that's that pleasures my my flesh right but damn, knowing there's an afterlife, bro, it's, it's you know, and believing that there's an afterlife also. And right. plus, not just that, uh, can you share us, share with us some of the, besides, because when you mentioned earlier, bro, when your homie got smoked right in front of you, that when it was supposed to be for you, mm -hmm. that right there for me is, is already like a miracle second chance. Right. Right? Yeah. And you saw that with your, with your eyes, your eyes were open. Did, can, can you share any any other uh, miracles that help you also? Uh, yeah, it was, 
Yeah, it was like, I mean, with that one, I'll go a little bit like we we plan on on robbing people. You know what I mean? Like that was the thing, hitting legs and stuff like that. But um, we had planned that I was going to go to the right of the car and he was going to go to the left of the car. But the crazy thing is he went to the right. So automatically, you know, I kind of went to the left uh, and then yeah, he got shot. I mean, I thought about it. If I was supposed to go there, I would have been shot too. You know I mean? what, what yeah. makes me? So when I saw that, I was like, this is kind of trippy. And I thought about when I had that conversation with my mom, because she said, you should come to church because it would be really sad that you live this crazy life and then you just die like that and go to hell. You know, I was like, man, whatever. I wasn't trying to hear it. But when that event happened, it kind of connected inside of my heart, like, damn, this is kind of trippy. And then another instance where same thing, you know, a lot of times it was trying to get me. Um, and then, you know, other people die next to me, like innocent people, you know what I mean? And I thought about it like, damn, I'm like my homies, like some of my homies got smoked and I'm just like, why not me? You know what I mean? Like they were more yeah. solid. I always had this thing, like the good die young, you know, like they, they're better than me as a person. They were less grimy. They were solid people, but they get, they end up dying. You know what I mean? And I was like a pretty filthy, grimy person, you know, but through that, I was able to see like, oh, I think there's something, there's another calling for me. Like I was able to kind of sense that, you know? Yeah. Damn, bro. Uh, I'm feeling the same way about that calling, man. <laughs> and uh, right. I believe that everything happens for a reason, bro. There's a reason how we found each other and while we're doing this right now. Hopefully somebody yeah. can, yeah, can, can feel, feel the same way. Because uh, uh, I'm trying to dissect how it was, how our mentality was before. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'd be, I would be watching the, um, the rap videos and stuff like that, and you see these fools... You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, it was the addiction of uh, to the lifestyle, to the uh, uh, adrenaline uh, rush or whatever you want to call it. But the thing is, what what is their what is their main purpose? To be a rapper and get rich that way, because others had made it, or they just don't they, they don't know what what it is. They just want to experience something first, but they don't know if they're gonna end up catching life or PC PC up. Right. Or, or or something, right? They, they don't exactly. they don't even know that, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think, you know, it's not to shame the generation now, but you know, if you're thugging back in the '90s all the way to early 2000s, a lot of people, you know, they're kind of gangbanging was really popular back then, you know, and it was yeah. something that was really a way of life for many people. Nowadays, it's a little bit different. There's a lot more technology and good things that they can turn to, but yeah, they make that choice because these rappers put that out there like this is the lifestyle. When the yeah. rappers themselves, sadly, they don't live that life either. They just rap in it, you know. So. We know people who are really solid, who really been to prison, they don't want this life for nobody. They don't even want it for their enemies, you know? So this is something that I think there's a lot of distortion. And for me too, you know, I wanted to do what I wanted to do as a kid. I seen, you know, the OGs riding around, have money and stuff in the neighborhood. I was like, damn, that's what I want to be. That came from a pain point. You know, I didn't have money, you know, so I wanted to make money. But my thought was like, I'll follow that thought. Like I'll follow what I feel and I'll, I'll just thug. And I never, I never thought I was going to end up in prison. Honestly, I never even thought I was going to do that. I just was doing what I was doing. I was going with the motions. So through that, you know, I was able to see like, damn, my life, it really wasn't like, it was something else that was kind of leading me. Now we're talking about the, the, the God thing, but there's also Satan, you know, I feel like truly he was pulling us and he pulls a lot of the people this way through these thoughts, through like looking at other people and envying their lifestyle, you know what I mean? And changing, he, that's his grip on the world, I, I feel like. Damn, bro, I, we're looking out for that. And also I, I want to add on, uh, even in prison, you maxed out. Right. You know, it's supposed to do eighty-five percent, but you did the whole hundred percent. Right. <laughs> so that just goes to show that uh, you tugged it out in in there, and uh, I mean, you know, not not ranking or whatever, and then just do, doing doing what needs to be done, going by the code, then coming out, and this when you uh, hit you with this with with you know, for me, it's the Holy Spirit, bro, or at least. You can't deny it, man. You're just going to lie to yourself. Uh, let me just add on to, uh, uh, we've seen it all also, like in the pain CYA, we've seen the hardest acting actor. I call him actor. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> they roll it up, they PC up. We've seen pretty much everything. The buffest guy, the 
you know, <laughs> everything, all these, all these amazing actors, man. So that's why we're like, man, this is this is boo boo. It's either you're real or you're just an actor, right? right? And uh, I, I just want to point that out because everybody's on social media now that you know, talking right. about. You know everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Also, by the way, bro, here in it, I, I mean, of because uh, I'm able to compare the culture here. This is a third world country, Philippines, and then right there, this, a lot of these people, because every every everybody is, they became gang gangsters because of the guns, mm -hmm. and then uh, here, uh, if if a man if a man ends up shooting somebody doming him or whatever doming uh, or murdering anybody he considers himself a, a gangster now but I, I wanted to teach that i wanted to to point out and really clarify that that doesn't make you a g because we've seen people in the in the prison who murked a lot of fools pc up and and, and rolled it up rolled it up so they, there's a mis misconception murking anybody shooting and don't make you a, a g it just makes you, I, I can't really say that much word because they got demonetized this, you know what I mean? But it makes you something else, not a G. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right? And uh, the, I just want to point that out because uh, there's a lot of misconceptions and people that love to speak and act like they've been to prison. Oh, I know about it because I saw it on TV. I know how prison is because I just, I know a lot of friends. So I pretty much, I know everything. Nah, man, that, that's not how it works. It's like me saying a, a pregnant woman is, I know how it is, how to be a pregnant woman. <laughs> yeah, <you know? laughs> exactly. Never been exactly. pregnant. How can I actually speak about it? So <laughs> everyone just loves to assume they know everything already. But uh, here, here we are talking from our experience because we actually been there, done that. And uh, that's not the measure of, of being a man and being a gym working anybody. Put down the, the, the guns. And just yeah, be a real man. Because even back in the days, there was no guns anyways. Real warriors were fighting with whatever they can, you know. Basically, there's no right. guns, man. It's hand-to-hand, -hand, right? So right. I hand -to -hand. Yes, sir, man. Uh, let, let's move forward. Coming out right now. How long have you been out, by the way? How many years? Yeah, so since 2000 and... 13 basically so yeah it's been Ooh. it's been a, a while you know and that's uh bad. yeah like i said you know just to add to that like you know in my heart like i said i wanted to do what i wanted to do so through that um i felt like that was something that led me to what i am now right but i learned through kind of the church and through these pastors and ministers that i kind of they're now my mentors you know what i mean back then the ogs was my mentors you know, and, and people like that. But nowadays I kind of shifted that, that, that lifestyle. And, um, I learned a lot that actually it wasn't really me, um, who was doing those things. Although yes, I was actively doing it and actively thugging, but like I said, there is like a sin inside of us, you know, we're born sinners. So as we're born into sin, it's kind of like an apple tree. You know, the apple is not going to produce any other tree. It's only going to produce apples. So if we're sinners, even though we may not show it, all we can produce is sin. So when I learned that, like, damn, you know, the reason why I was so crazy and the reason why I was so, like, defiant and stuff like that, I was born that way. You know, I was born into this lifestyle. And it wasn't just because I was born in Section 8, but more it was, like, in my heart, I wanted to do what I wanted to do. So I trusted myself a lot, you know what I mean? And then through that, like I was able to kind of learn like, damn, when I trusted myself, when I did what I wanted to do, I kind of ended up really, really bad, you know what I mean? And um, through that, I feel like God was showing me like, bro, you got to trust in me, the Holy Spirit, you got to trust in God's word. And then from here on out, you know, I've been living my life that way. Nowadays, I'm, you know, I'm settled down, you know, I go to like Sacramento, San Jose, I go to places to share this testimony. And we even have like a kind of a contract with the government where we're, we're, we're like in, in a few days, I think June 10th or June 12th, we're going to go to um, Lancaster, and we're going to go in there and kind of like, you know, do like the the preaching and kind of share our testimonies with people and and work with the work with these people, you know. And when I think about that, I'm really thankful, you know. I thought my life was a curse. Honestly, I just wanted to die. But actually, um, through that, you know, God was showing me, no, your life is a blessing, actually. I can use this to reach these people, to push that line for people to be righteous and be good. 
And um, yeah, I'm very thankful about that, honestly. Damn, bro. Uh, man, that's, that, that's, uh, I really appreciate it, bro, what you're doing. And what do you call this? That's an honorable thing to do. Because usually some, some people are like, man, forget these kids, man. Let them go to prison, man. You know, <laughs> you, you can't, you, you know, you can't save nobody. You can't, you, nobody gonna listen to you. Like, yeah, but the thing is, um, even when I was a little kid, I would actually listen to the people that had been there, done that, and judge for myself if they're telling the truth or not. You know, we actually we already we were already conscious of that, but we were just so stuck in in the in the game that we wanted to to touch the fire to, if, to see if it actually uh, if it will burn us. And you know, <laughs> and luckily we didn't catch life, bro. We out of here, man. Freedom, you know. So. <laughs> You know, we're, right. we're, we're, we're doing that, man. We're doing that. Because here's the thing. Here's what I always say also, brother. Uh, when 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 we drop dead later or tomorrow, we, we don't know when because only God knows when. We, I want to be able to say and write in front of his eyes that because he's going to ask me, he's going to ask us like, hey, what what what's the uh, what did you do with the precious life that I gave you? Mm-hmm. You know, there on planet Earth. I don't want to answer like, uh, you know, I just like whatever. You know, I just had fun. I just, you know, <laughs> I want to be answer. I want to be able to answer like, I did my best. You know, and uh, I know you saw everything. You saw my heart. Only you knows about. Only you know about it. And uh, thank you for the life that you gave me, man. And uh, go ahead and and uh, be be the real judge. That's the real judge, right? For sure, that's the judge, bro. And like <clears throat> to speak up and kind of add to that too, part of like. It's really true what you're saying, you know, like when we meet in front of God, you know, we got to have that. I can't be like, oh, she's not watching. You know, I can't be like, I don't have that. You know what I'm saying? I got I to gotta be like, yo, you know, like we got to answer for some of the things. But that was the one thing that I learned from the church was like, you know, I knew that Jesus died. I mean, everybody knows that, you know what I mean? But I didn't understand why he came down, to be real. And at that point, that was the pivotal point in my life when I was like, all right, so I'm a big ass sinner. You know, I did a lot of shit that I don't like to talk about that I'm still shameful about that I think about today, the families that I hurt, the shit that I did, you know, but I was really, that kind of weighed heavy on me, to be honest, you know, even though we, we signed up for it, even though we was doing it actively, it's still the families, you know, you kind of feel for them because you got a mom, you know, you got a, you got a dad, you know, you got family. So um, that kind of weighed down on my spirit, but I was able to see that, damn, Jesus came and died for a person like me, you know, all of my sins, not just the ones that I'm committing now, but even in the future, God knows. And even in the past, God knows that what I was doing. So he let him come die for all of my sins. And then I'm able to say, okay, I didn't do nothing well, but he died for me. And then through that, I was able to actually receive righteousness, the same righteousness that Jesus has, you know? And then through that, I didn't have to live like an animal no more. In my heart, I was like, bro, I'm righteous. Like, my sins are gone. I'll tell my homies, yeah, I ain't got no more sins. They'd be like, bro, we know you, fool. We was there, like, how many, you know, like, how many times you did this sin and that sin? But then yeah. as I preached to them this way, laced them up this way, they was able to realize, damn, that's true. Like, if that's the case, then, you know, God didn't just send his son. His son didn't fail. You know what I mean? He died and washed all of our sins completely. But we have to believe that. When I believe that, that hope entered inside of my heart. And I was able to just take all the bullshit for real, you know? So, yeah. Damn, bro. Uh, hell yeah. And uh, to add on also to those who don't know, uh, you was you, you was born or you was in a background family. Uh, your, basically, your background was Buddhism, right? Yeah. Yeah, my mom was like active Buddhist. My dad, he was more like, he was, he kind of just lived with it, but he never practiced it. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. And uh, me, on the other hand, it was easier for me because I was already born in the background of Catholicism, Roman Roman Catholic. And uh, I mean, I, I've, I've studied, uh, I mean, you know, I, I was all, all, all into basically studying everything, like in the pin, you know, Buddhism, Taoism, Taoism, all the Judaism, all Islam, everything. But yeah. it doesn't mean that whatever, because nobody really knows what's in our heart. You know, and plus, if you're his people, then you're you're his kid. You right. know, basically. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, bro. Hey, do you have any uh and any other last pos- uh positive message that you want to share before mm-hmm. you know end this video, bro? 
Yeah, for sure. So, you know, first off, I, I want to thank Father Young. Everybody, man, if you guys are listening in, please follow. You know, like this is a person who's who's moving forward. And, um, you know, it's it's really something that I, I really respect, you know, and there's not a lot of people doing that actively pushing for the youth, pushing for people. It's not just the youth, but people who are still stuck in their thoughts, still stuck in their depression, whatever. You know, I feel like this channel will, will, will ultimately help, you know, so I think that number one, you know, please, please follow, like, comment, subscribe, whatever. But more importantly, um, also, you know, we have to realize that we are people who are not the masters of our lives. You know, there is a higher being. There is this higher force that pulls and there is good and evil. We all know that, you know, you don't have to be a gangster to understand that. Actually, you know, you can even squares, even people in this world, they understand that there is good and bad. So if we're able to truly kind of turn from ourselves, turn from what we feel, what we believe, and more so towards the word of God, I think that would be the best thing. And that really changed my life. Trust me, I didn't want to live. I didn't want to believe in God. It wasn't none, none of my choice, actually. Uh, I wanted to be a gangster. I, I thought of Pelican Bay and prison as university to me, as UCLA, as, you know, things like that. But actually, I was able to, not me, but God was able to change my heart. So I feel like it's not just about, you know, pushing the God thing, but more importantly, there is something higher. There is a purpose for everybody's life. And I hope that everybody can find that very clearly and realize that we are people who are God's children. And even my own dad who looks out for me, worldly dad, he loves me, but, um, you know, can't compare it to the, the God that we have, you know, and that's, that's kind of what my message is. Hell yeah. Thank you, brother. Uh, I, I appreciate that everything that you're doing. That's a, uh, like I said, that's an honorable, honorable thing to do. And it's an honor to have you in the show, bro. And uh, let's keep pushing, man, because it's the right thing to do. So, yeah, uh, hopefully uh, I'll see you soon, too, one of these days. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I visit, visit the Philippines, I'll, I'll drop in for sure. Yes. Uh, but, yes, um, also, you know, I just want to say one more thing, you know, like, um, Fada Young actually inspired me a little bit to also kind of start my content and stuff like that. So that's just one big up to the to the homie, you know, honestly, for kind of inspiring me to push that and and yeah, start a YouTube yeah. channel and all. It, it, by the way, state your YouTube channel right here. Well, what is it? So it'll be uh, No Script Fellowship. So No Script Fellowship, just like how me and Fada Young was doing it here. <laughs> it's no yes. scripts, no nothing. Damn, guys. Yeah. Make sure to uh, follow the homie. Thank you, brother. Uh, see you soon, man. And with that being said, you'll know what time it is. Say what you mean and mean what you say because real recognize real homeboy. I'm out of here. Yeah.